So this video is an update of what my YouTube studio looks like in mid-2023. Last year's when I set it up for the first time, it was a bare room prior and since then I've made some considerable improvements to it. This is where I film a lot of my YouTube videos, edit them too, and then end the day with a quick gaming session. First time around, I built a great looking environment that allowed me to work, but this time I really improved the coziness factor and how practical this whole room is for filming videos. If you're detail oriented and care about the little things that make perfect, then I think you'll like what I created here. And maybe you'll come across something you may want to replicate with your own desk setup or YouTube studio. This video is sponsored by Ugreen, more on them later. Alright, let's jump right in. The core change of this revamped setup is the PC. I solely use it for gaming as I edit my videos on a Mac, but it was nice to build a new PC after all these years. I've always went with mini ITX builds, but the Fractal North was simply too good looking to skip. I definitely hopped onto the oak slat trend and this case was just the perfect fit with my accent wall. Paired with a stock i5 13600K, an RTX 4070 and 32 gigs of RAM, this PC runs cool and quiet and it's been solid for Hogwarts Legacy, which is my game of choice these days with the little time I have to actually game. I'll soon publish a full build log of this very PC, so stay tuned if you want to learn more. To improve the practical aspect of this room, I made some considerable changes with new storage solutions. I first added this Besta unit near my desk, it's actually covering a wall socket, so I can have powered devices in it with perfect cable management. It's worth noting that this isn't up to code where I live, but the risks are very low in reality with the devices I got plugged in. So not only this allows me to manage the wired Ethernet adapter coming into this room, but I also get to connect one of my Sonos One speakers, a Google Nest Hub, and a video light with basically no visible wires. I managed to get the power cables up there by drilling large grommet holes into the Besta assembly, both under and in the middle, and then the shelves have a bit of give at the back for cables to run behind. Finally, I added this little Lego drawer, an artificial plant, and this Land Rover Lego build I assembled a couple months ago, and I think it looks stunning, especially with this oak finished door. The other change in storage I made is that I expanded my IKEA Ordal wardrobe assembly with an extra section. It did require some cutting to do the slanted ceiling, but all in all, I'm really happy with all the additional shelving I got by doing this. I also got power in the closet, so now I have lights that automatically turn on and off with the doors in here, and my battery and camera chargers can remain hidden too while being fully operational. These are connected to Ugreen's most powerful GAN charger yet, with up to 300 watts of charging power across its 5 USB ports. It's the first 300 watt USB charger I've come across. I'm not even sure if such a powerful charger exists today, apart from this one. So both my camera and battery chargers can stay permanently connected to it, and it still leaves me with three free USB ports. Speaking of which, one of the five USB ports is USB-A, which can charge at up to 22.5 watts, while the remaining USB-C ports provide even more power, the top one up to 140 watts for the most demanding devices. So it's kind of the ultimate charging station for all your tech. I personally have a laptop, an iPad, a phone, a bunch of wireless headphones, and I like that they can all charge at once with this single charger. Even my camera slider charges via USB-C, so this charger is getting a lot of use in my studio. But even then, I'm not using it at its full potential, as you can also easily charge two laptops at once with it. It features the latest PD3.1 charging protocol, meaning it can adjust to a variety of voltages that are appropriate to safely charge all your devices. Speaking of safety, it also has the thermal guard system built into it, which monitors connected devices' temperature to prevent overheating and overcurrent. That, on top of its shell being flame retardant, are great features to me, especially since I have it in a closet. Chances are you'll use it in an open area, and the good thing is that it has a great looking design and is fairly compact considering how many devices it can charge. All in all, I'm super happy with this unit, as I've been with other Ugreen products over the years, and I invite you to check out this 300 watt GAN charger, links will be down in the description. Going back to my storage upgrades, I also added two Skedis pegboards behind the desk setup. This is where I like to stash the items I use often, or in some cases decorative items that I like to have on display. All in all, I'm quite happy with these upgrades and they definitely make things easier. 
Next considerable change I made is this mode and void keyboard. This is an entry level custom 65% mechanical keyboard. And here I say entry level because of the price, but quality wise, this is a super awesome pick. It comes with a bunch of finish options for the case, the accent piece at the back and the weight under. And here I went with some of the most affordable options with green for the case and silver for the accent and weight. It's a very unique shade of green, almost gray I would say, although it does contrast with the gray accents quite well. I paired it with Mode's very own Obscura linear switches, which are factory lube with Crytox 205, and then a GMK Hennessy set for crisp black on white keycaps. I went with the solder version, but a hot swap PCB is also offered, and I went no foam at all, but foam kits are available too. All in all, this is a very clacky boy, it does sound quite loud. I may add some foam case at some point to dampen it a bit. I've been super pleased with this board, not only the quality is up there, but the mounting system is easy to assemble and it looks so good too. I already had this KBD fans coiled cable which does match quite well. Finally, it's sitting on top of a desk mat from Mode, and this isn't your typical mat, they actually engineered their own surface material. It's a little bit rougher and has the effect of gliding even better with your mouse. It also feels as if it won't catch dirt as easily, so that's great. All in all, a solid choice if you switch between gaming and productivity on the daily. Next item I upgraded, or at least replaced, is the monitor. I previously rocked a 32-inch 4K 144Hz monitor and decided to go with a 27-inch model instead, although with very similar specs. This is the LG 27GN95R monitor and I went with this one as it was quite affordable, came with small bezels and no branding. I considered getting a mini LED panel too, but it would have been a lot more expensive and stocks were very limited at the time, so next time I guess. In the end, this specific LG model compromises on only having HDMI 2.0 ports, effectively limiting these at 4K 60Hz, but it's fine for me as I only use the HDMI inputs with my Mac, while I dedicate the DisplayPort port for my PC. Although having a high refresh rate display feels great even on a Mac for productivity work, I don't see it as a huge drawback as long as the monitor is sharp and accurate. So yeah. Hopefully in the next few years, OLED and mini LED options become more common. In the meantime, this LG model will do more than fine for my needs. I didn't have speakers last time around as I relied solely on headphones for video editing or a headset for gaming, but it's nice to step back and game with speakers on from time to time. So I added this Sonos Ray connected to the PC via an optical audio cable. I reused those black Sonos ones I already had for a surround setup Although they're not well positioned for a proper surround setup, this is a pretty nice setup to fill the room with sound when listening to music, as the Ray is connected to my network via Wi-Fi and I can easily stream to it from any device. It sounds super great for its size and works well with dialogues and movies, so it happens to be well tailored for gaming as a side effect. This soundbar happens to sit on a new shelf from Grovemade. They released oak as a wood species for some of their accessories, and so this one is made from full solid oak. Given my whole room is filled with oak, or oak-like details, from my desktop, wood slats on the wall, wood slats on my PC case, cabinet door, wall lights and accessories, I couldn't not get this solid oak shelf from Grovemade. This is the medium size and it fits this 55 inch wide desktop with the PC and laptop stand already on there. Speaking of that laptop stand, this is the uppercase design pillar stand. I've had it for years and to me this is the highest quality and best looking stand out there. I do wish they offered it in more colors, but if black is what you're looking for, this is a super solid all metal laptop stand that feels incredibly premium. Something else I added which has been incredibly useful are these iron pipes. They're sold for clothing, like you can hang cloth hangers of those, but they're full metal and super solid, so they can definitely be used for more heavy duty scenarios, such as mine. I got Elgato Air key lights permanently mounted to both of them, which is super practical for B-roll and unboxings. I could also attach some sort of quick release adapter for my camera for top down shots, but for now this rack on my accent wall is more of a decorative piece with the string lights and hanging artificial plants. On the facing wall I have the same iron pipe setup with another key light permanently installed as a hair light and then some clamps where I can attach my video lights. 
I also added this power strip on the wall so I can easily power whatever light or other accessories I end up adding there. And overall, I'm quite happy with how clean this is. It truly saves me a lot of floor space versus having light stands and allows me to keep light placements unchanged between shoots, which also helps making the whole filmmaking process simpler. Finally, I also got these iron pipe style shelf brackets and used them for single point mounting locations for my lights. Kind of the same idea, but with a set location. Although that's not their intended usage, I'm super happy with this solution as it works perfectly for my needs. It looks pretty good too with this industrial vibe and it's quite inexpensive compared to similar photo or video oriented solutions that intend to achieve the same goal. Finally, as you may have noticed, I added a couple artificial plants here and there to really make this place cozy. Unfortunately, this room doesn't get any natural light, so I had to resort to artificial plants here. They're all from Ikea, I happen to live 10 minutes away from a location, and their prices are pretty good, especially for that kind of stuff. The one I'm particularly happy with is this fake bamboo tree. I got a real pot for it and filled it with river rocks and then managed to add a smart light bulb in it with a cord and socket combo from Ikea. So it adds a little bit of glow under the leaves, which looks super nice, especially at night when all other lights are dim. I was able to drill a hole at the back of the pot to run the cord and manage it in a way that's barely visible. Alright, so that's it for today. Please let me know down below what you think about this space. Everyone I've shown it to in real life only had good things to say and I too am pretty happy with it. Future upgrades may include a more premium chair, slim LED mats for video lights instead of those bulky light domes, and maybe some ceiling acoustic panels just to get rid of that last bit of reverb. And well, let me know what you think about those potential changes. Alright, thank you for watching, make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, as I'll see you in the next video.